So, what's the real scoop? Is this forward-facing slash live scoping thing really at the point where you can't be competitive against these guys? Well, truth be told, there's mine. I own one. And I'm going to tell you a few things that I learned about it. Number one, nothing is foolproof. It can show you fish, but unless you know what type of fish you're seeing, you might not catch them. Or you might spend a day fishing for catfish, but you're actually bass fishing or crappies. It takes a lot of experience to know the difference in a fish. Number two, unless your trolling motor is pointed in a specific direction where you're looking for the fish, it's just about useless. If I'm going down a bank and sometimes I'm turning to the right, sometimes I'm turning to the left, every time I'm looking to the left, I'm looking nowhere. If I'm looking to the right, I'm looking toward the bank. If it's really shallow water, really don't see the fish. So if you pound the bank, if you're a big time pitcher and flipper, you're John Cox, really doesn't do anything for you. Next thing. How many fish did I actually catch by using the forward facing sonar? The honest answer is a lot. And the reason it was a lot is because I was able to detect objects in front of me at times, underwater logs, stuff like that, clumps of grass that I wouldn't have been able to see. Now, to be honest with you, if I had Humminbird 360, I would have seen those same logs and stuff like that. So a lot of people have 360 and nobody said that that was an unfair advantage. Let's go to the next one. The next thing we have to talk about is you don't just turn it on and see fish. You have to take the time to set it up, sometimes almost every day, depending on the water conditions, to get some target separation. And that's another problem. This unit that I have, and this is a seven, okay? This is a very small screen for what you're trying to do target separation is not really good. So you have to really be paying attention. That's another factor. Now, where did this work really good? It worked really good up on Lake Champlain. I was able to see fish suspended under boats, suspended on mooring lines. But here's the thing. I was going to run up and make a cast to them anyhow. It gave me the added confidence to know that there was a fish, but I was probably going to fish them regardless. Because, now here's the thing that a lot of people don't tell you. If these fish are tight to the bottom, okay, if there's any type of boulders, nooks, crannies, crevices, and the fish are tight to the bottom, you will never see them unless they come for a bait. So in a lot of cases, you need to stop at that spot, throw the bait out, and see if anything responds to it. There's another one. Let's go to our final conclusion. Does it help? In a lot of cases, yeah, it helps. Can you still be competitive? Absolutely. Especially if you're in a shallow water situation where there's a lot of shallow water fishing. Especially now, because the forward-facing sonar has a lot of guys fishing offshore. So in my opinion, shorelines are getting less pressure and you can catch more fish. Hey, is John Cox competitive in nearly every tournament? The answer is yeah, pretty much. Unless you're going to the Great Lakes somewhere where it's an open water fishery. And even then, when it was just 2D. A lot of guys still caught a lot of fish fishing with 2D. So can you be competitive? Yeah. Did it ruin the sport? 
In my opinion, no, but it certainly changed it. Hey, I'm Steve, and we just talked about live scoping.